system deals with modeling with dependent sources, you can find these notes in the course ebook in chapter 3, starting on page 46. Let's revisit our inverting amplifier that we looked at in chapter 8 on page 3. What I want to do is construct a model for what's in the yellow box. I have an input V1, which is considered to be known. Likewise, the resistors R1, R2, and R sub L are known. And what's unknown is the voltage V2. The current going in and out of the op amp is zero. And if I have feedback, the voltage across the terminals of the op amp is driven to zero. You can label this plus to minus zero or plus to minus zero the other way. It means the same thing. If I apply a voltage, a current will flow. I'll just say it's in this direction. Likewise, there'll be some current in this resistor. You pick any direction, but just stick with it once you pick it. Let's write the equations again for this amplifier. The rise in voltage is V1. The drop is going to be I1 times R1 plus a drop of zero. And that's this equation right here. Solving for I1, it's equal to V1 divided by R1. Go around this loop. The rise in voltage is zero. I have a drop of I2, R2, and a drop of V2. That's this equation. Let's solve for V2. Put this on the other side of the equation as a minus I2, R2. And I've got V2 in terms of I2. Now, how are I1 and I2 related? Well, let's go back here and do Kirchhoff's current law at this node. The current that enters is I1, the current that leaves is zero, and I2. I1 equals I2. V2 is equal to minus I2, R2, but I2 is equal to I1, and I1 is equal to V1 over R1. Just exchange these two, and I then get that V2 is equal to minus R2 over R1 times V1. This would be our transfer function. As far as the yellow box goes, on the outside of it, we have a current I1 flowing, and the relationship we found was right here, that V1 is equal to I1, R1. And we found that V2 is equal to minus R2 over R1 times V1. A model has the same set of equations. What is this? This is just simply Ohm's law, and this is really a voltage-controlled voltage source. So let's try to put together a model that would have the same equations. Between the terminals where V1 is, I'm going to put a resistor R1, and if I apply a voltage V1, a current is going to flow, I'll call it I1, and it's going to be equal to V1 divided by R1, the same equation we had above. The output voltage is equal to a minus R2 over R1 times V1, and I'll just flip the sign of this controlled source so that this node voltage, V2, is equal to a minus R2 over R1 times V1. If you put a resistor here for a load, R sub L, a current's going to flow in this direction, and the value is going to be minus R2 over R1 times V1 for the voltage, and then divide by the resistance and get the current I sub L. Both the original circuit and this model have the same equations, so they're equivalent. Now the advantage of taking the inverting amplifier and replacing it by this model is that we don't have to drive all these equations again. The inverting amplifier is used in a lot of audio applications and instrumentation applications. So it'll be easier for us to analyze the circuit by just replacing the inverting amplifier with this model. Now this model uses the resistance and a voltage controlled voltage source. Let's take a look at an example where we can use this modeling technique of the inverting amplifier. What's shown below is called a fader circuit. And you may have experienced this circuit in an automobile where you have speakers in the front, speakers in the back, and you can position all the music in the front, all the music in the back, or anywhere in between. Also what's shown below here is just one of two channels. This is for the left stereo channel. We do a similar circuit for the right one. This is also called a pan pot circuit. And a pan pot circuit is one that can electrically position a single source of sound across the panorama from the front to the rear speaker using a potentiometer. The resistors that are shown here are half percent precision resistors. And these were picked very carefully to get a particular effect, and we'll talk about that as we solve the problem. To figure out what the value at the output is in terms of the input, as we move the pot from one extreme end to the other, and in the middle. If you look at the circuit, you can see there is an inverting amplifier embedded in the circuit, and another one over here. Well, I could analyze the circuit from scratch, labeling no voltage, no current, and analyze the circuit, but actually I know what this does. I want to replace it by its model, and then analyze the circuit. Let's replace those two inverting amplifiers with their models. I'm going to call this node voltage V1 and this node voltage V2. And what's hooked up to this node is the 10K resistor we were calling R1 in our inverting amplifier model, and that is our effective input resistance back to ground. And then from here to the output of the op amp, we have a gain of minus R2 over R1. 
and that's going to be 58.3k divided by 10k or 5.83 and again there's a negative gain so i'm going to put the minus sign on top here to make this a positive number same is true for the bottom op amp but it's now a different input voltage i'll call that v2 input resistance of 10k and a voltage gain of minus 5.83 times the voltage v2 now a supplemental problem 2.13 we modeled a pot with two resistors the value of the pot was 10k and this part of the pot i'll call alpha times 10k and this part one minus alpha times 10k the pots in the middle position alpha is equal to a half and i've got 5k and 5k when alpha is equal to zero the pots all the way to the top position giving me zero for that resistor, and then when alpha is zero, I get 10K for the remainder of it. The sum is always 10K, and divide it up between the two of the resistors. Now, analyzing the circuit can be challenging, but sometimes just redrawing a circuit can make it a little bit easier to figure out. Let me try to do that in this case. Now, when you have a source feeding more than one point, a trick I like to do is to show it twice. It's sort of like the wall outlet. You can plug all kinds of things in the wall outlet. You literally are connecting a voltage source across each appliance. And you can just think of it that way. So I'm just going to label this as V left. So I've got a top half of the circuit and a bottom half of the circuit. So let me just draw the top half of the circuit. So I've got a, a V left coming here, a 24.3K, and then alpha times 10K back to ground, a 10K back to ground, and then an output through a controlled source back to ground. And that's shown below. Redrawing the top circuit, the resistor, the pot, another resistor, and the control source. Do the same thing for the bottom half of the circuit. I'm going to flip it over a little bit here. But I've got a V left from this node back to ground. I've got a 24.3K, and then I've got 1 minus alpha times 10K back to ground. So I'm just going to fold that over back this way. And that's also in parallel with the 10K, and then the controlled source for the left output for the rear. So here's the 24.3K resistor, and then the 1 minus alpha times 10K to ground, 10K in parallel with that, and then the controlled source for the output for the rear speaker. And now I've got my circuit redrawn. So let's analyze the circuit. So the voltage V1 is a voltage divider with these two in parallel. And whenever voltage shows up here, it gets amplified by a minus 5.83. Same is true here. Got a voltage divider. Whatever shows up here gets amplified by a minus 5.83. So let's analyze the circuit on the next page. Let's first try sliding the pot all the way to the bottom. That's actually when alpha is equal to one. For this top circuit, we had alpha times 10K, so it's just 10K. And this part of the pot, it was one minus alpha times 10K, so that's equal to zero. What's coming out of the left stereo channel? Voltage divides with 10K in parallel with 10K. Equal resistors in parallel have just half the value, so that's 5K. And it's voltage divided with 24.3K. Voltage V1 is a fraction of what's coming out of the left stereo channel. That gets amplified by a gain of minus 5.83. The output then is minus 5.83 times this, substitute in for V1. And you end up getting a value of minus 0.995, roughly equal to one in magnitude. The minus sign gives us a phase shift of 180, but if all the music is phase shifted by 180, you won't notice the difference. To the left front speaker, I basically have all of the left channel showing up. Take a look at the other part of the circuit that goes to the rear speaker. Zero in parallel with 10K is the product over the sum. So zero times 10K over zero plus 10K is zero. So that's a voltage divider of zero over 24.3K plus zero times the output of the left stereo channel. That voltage sees a gain of minus 5.83, but this is equal to zero. So when we substitute that in for V2, we get a minus 5.83 times zero times V left. All the sound is going to the front left speaker. Now let's put the pot in the center position. That would be alpha equal to a half. The 10K pot is multiplied by alpha, so it becomes 5K. And then one minus alpha is also half times 10K, which is 5K. Now I got a voltage divider again, but now with 5K in parallel with 10K, product over sum turns out to be 3.33K. So 3.33K divided by 24.3K plus 3.33K times what's coming out of the left stereo channel is the voltage V1. And then what goes to the left front speaker is minus 5.83 times that. When you multiply this out, you get a minus 0.703 times the left stereo channel. I'm gonna get the same result for the rear speaker because this is the same value of resistance. V2 is gonna be equal to the same expression times the left stereo channel. And that's gonna see a gain times that voltage, which is now V2. We'll get exactly the same value. We're taking the left stereo channel and putting a value of 0.703 times that 
to the left front speaker and the same to the left rear speaker. So in the first case, we had all the voltage go to the front speaker and nothing going to the back. Now what we've got is an equal amount of 0.703. The power that you hear is V squared over the resistance of the speaker. So if you square this, you end up getting roughly a half. Half the power goes to the front speaker, half the power goes to the rear speaker. Then lastly, if we make alpha equal to zero, it's pretty much the same as on the top here, except that the front speaker will now be doing what the rear speaker was doing. So we'll have the short circuit over here and the 10K over here. But when you put it in the top position, nothing goes to the front speaker and it all goes to the back speaker. We just looked at three points, the two extreme ends in the middle. If you calculate different distances, say if you set the pot to one third, you actually get one third the power to one speaker and two thirds the power to the other speaker. The circuit is very linear with power distribution. And so it sounds very uniform as you slide the pot or change the settings and move the sound from the back to the front. And this is how a fader circuit works. And we're using the idea of modeling our inverting amplifier.